Hello everyone and welcome to another Cricut Design Space tutorial. For this video I'm going to concentrate on how I slice objects apart and also how I weld objects together to create my own designs for my layouts. You can see that I've got a double page spread here. Basically what I do when I'm creating a layout is I do a sort of sketch and I do put in 12 by 12 base pages. This is a double page spread. You might have seen this video already where I put did the process of putting everything together if you haven't seen that I will put a link in the description below so that you can check that out but I have been getting quite a lot of questions about how I manipulate images and I use the slice tool and I use the weld tool as well and I'm going to show you how I created this magical title and what I show you today you'll be able to apply to any number of different objects so I'm just going to scroll down here so I can get a blank area to work with and the first thing I'm going to show you is how I actually found a title I went into images and I have Cricut Access. So I knew that the title that I wanted to use for the page was going to have the word magical in it. So I just typed magical in here and searched for it. Usually what I do when I'm creating titles is I create them myself with text. But for this one, I wanted to have a look at what was available in Cricut Access. So I'm just going to scroll down and you can see there's a whole lot of options here. And what I can do as I'm scrolling, if I see something that I think I like, I can click on it and it will put it in this little bar down here. I don't have to remember to go back to find it, but I can keep scrolling. And this is the one that I selected and the one I'm going to play with today to show you how I just got the word magical from it. But if I think I want to play with more than one image, I can definitely have three selected here or more and add them to the canvas. But I know for today, I just want to work on this life is magical and I'm going to add it to the canvas. So it's put it at the top of the page. So I'll just scroll back down again here and I'm going to make this quite large so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. If you look at the layers panel over here, you can see this is one image. It's not grouped at all. So what I want to do is cut away the life and the is, but I want to keep this little star here and put this down on top of the eye. So just pretend you have a pair of scissors and you just want to cut these pieces out. I need to use a tool to do it when I'm in design space. So I'm going to go into shapes. I'm just going to select a square and I'll make it white so it's easy for you to see. And then I'm going to put it over the top of the word life and then drag out the sides of the boxes. I don't need to drag from the corners anymore. Design Space did an update quite some time ago. Now you can just hover over the edges and drag it out like that, which is even quicker to do when you're purposefully sizing something to slice something away. I'm going to put this at the back just so that you can see what I'm doing. I know that I had this whole life word covered with that. I can't bring this rectangle out to get the is at the same time because of where this star is positioned. So I need to cut away the word life first. So I'm just going to select this. It's selecting just two elements and the slice tool is available to be used. So I've just clicked on that and I'll move this title away. You can see now I've just got is magical. I'm going to get rid of everything here, but I'm going to show you how the slice tool works. There's my original rectangle with the word life cut out of it. It keeps all the pieces and there's the original word life that was within that word art piece. I'm just going to delete that. Now you can go to the rubbish bin here. You can right click and select delete, or you can just press the delete key on your keyboard. So now I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the word is. Put in a square. I'm going to drag that out so that it covers the word is. I won't bother putting it to the back. I did that just so that you could see what I did the first time. I know that I've got everything covered here. I'm selecting both of those elements and I'm going to slice them. And then I can move the main part that I want to keep away and delete the pieces that I don't want. Now the next thing I want to do is move this star down so that it is on top of the eye here. So once again I need to go into shapes and select my square and I'm going to slice these two pieces apart. And 
and there's my star and I'm going to rotate a little bit so you can resize by dragging out the box but if you hover over the edge of the box or out from the side of it you get this little curved arrow and that allows you to do a freehand rotate of it so I'm just going to position it where I want it to be I don't want it totally on top of the eye I want it a little bit offset just for a little bit of fun and then I'm going to bring this star that's up the top here down closer to the M so I'm going to select shapes again bring in that square I'm going to rotate that so it's more of a diamond so that it will cover those two pieces and slice and then I'm just going to drag those away and I've got my little star here that I can just position just over the top of that M. So this is the title that I wanted to work with. I didn't want Life is Magical. It didn't quite fit onto the layout that I designed. So this will work really well for my title. What I want to do now is to create an outline of it. So another layer so that these words here will sit on top of a base layer and it will have an outline. So the first thing I'm going to do is just change everything to white and then I'm going to go into the offset tool and you can see here that it has put a blue line around everything. Now I can adjust this, I can drag it up, I can drag it down or I can type in exactly what I want my offset to be. So I've selected 0.13 that gives a nice sort of layer here but I might just increase it just a little bit. I can't remember what I did on the original. Sometimes I keep the 0.13 as my standard but sometimes I just want to change things to be a look that I'm going for. I'm having a look at this blue outline here and it's quite close here between this A and the star so maybe I could increase that just a little bit more and then that will join up so that will prevent the Cricut trying to slice two little areas that would be quite intricate for it to do. Now I can look if I want rounded corners or if I want angled corners but if I press angled corners for this what it's doing is blunting off the tips of the stars so I'm going to go back to the rounded and I'm going to press apply so now I have my offset these are my three pieces for my word actually I'm going to group those together so they become one item here and then I'm just going to look at the offset tool and go into contour and see if there's any pieces here that are just a little bit too tight and might make it too intricate to cut so I'm just going to hide the small ones and keep the larger ones here so that there's a little bit of a feature with the background page showing through those. I'm not going to press hide all contours. I'm just going to close that and I'm happy with what I've got there and now I'm able to send that off to make it. It's going to cut out the base layer which is the offset and then it's going to cut out all of these letters and the stars as individual elements. So I quite like how that looks. I'm just going to group that together and hide it for now and go back up to my original page and you can see that's what I've got here. So what I would do once I've done that is then put it onto my page and just using the arrow keys and holding down my mouse I would drag it to the size that I want it to be. The next thing I want to show you is how I created these star elements. Yeah. I'm going to go into images and show you how I found the star. Now I have Cricut Access so if I just type in star I'm going to get all the stars that are available on Cricut Access but I know that the star that I want is actually one that I have purchased with a close to my heart collection. So I'm going to go into purchased and this generally brings in everything that I've got from close to my heart collections before they started using SVGs for their digital art collections. So I'm just scrolling down here until I find the star that I want and that's here so I click on that it pops it in here ready to add to canvas but if you don't know what collection it comes from you can actually click on these three little dots here it gives you the number here of what the reference number is for this particular image but I can also click on view image sets 
and that will bring up the collection that it's from and this works with other items as well in Cricut Access if it comes with a collection or with other digital sets that you may have purchased. So this star here is from the Art Philosophy collection which goes back quite some time I think that's been around for nearly 10 years. I'm pretty sure that since Close to My Heart have been in Australia that the Art Philosophy collection was available when they arrived here in Australia. So I've had this one for quite some time but I do love this star and I'm going to add that to the canvas. I'm going to make this just a bit larger so that you can see how I'm working with this. There are two layers to this star. There is the overlay part and then there is the base layer. I'm just going to delete that base layer so that I can have an overlay type look and I want to create a grouping of these. So I'm going to change it to white because it's sometimes easier to see if you've got a pale color whether or not your positioning is going to work when you weld things together. There are several ways you can duplicate this you can just duplicate it or I'm just going to use my keyboard and press Control C you can right click copy and then paste but I know I want five of these all together so if I can just use my keyboard and do Control C and Control V that's a lot quicker than right clicking or going up here to duplicate or bringing up the menu so to create a section of stars that are all joined up together, I'm just going to bring them all in. I'm going to rotate some a little bit and I'm going to make sure that these sections here are overlapping. So if I zoom in just a little bit more here, you can see that that point is going into this part of the star and that's what I want so that I'm able to weld these together. If they're not overlapping in any way, then it's not going to have them all joined up together. Let me just go back to the screen here. I'm going to move these all down a little bit so we don't have this page up here to distract us. So then it's just a case of going in and grabbing the next star. You can see I've got that little rotate button. So I can rotate that around. I can bring that in. It's not going to look exactly the same as the ones that I've got in my layout up here. But I just want to have a little bit of a play with this so that I can show you how to put something like this together. Now the points of contact with this star here now are in three different places. So I've got the point coming into the star here. This point's coming into the star and it's joining up with this bottom one. And that will be a little bit more sturdy when you go to cut them out. So the more that's overlapping, the better it sort of is sometimes when you're doing these sorts of things so that it's not too fine and becomes too flimsy and too intricate. You can use the intricate setting and that basically slows the blade down so that the machine is able to work a little bit slower when it comes to cutting around tight corners and intricate pieces. So I've stacked this but I really think I need to play with this a bit more. There was a bit too much gap there in the middle. I want the stars to look like they're meant to be all one piece and not have too much gap. So I'm hoping you can pick this up on your screen. Certainly if you're watching this on your computer or on a larger monitor, you'll be able to see, I'll zoom this in so that it shows it in a little bit more detail, all the points of these stars are going into other stars. So I know that they're all going to cut as one piece. If I had this one here down a little bit and it looked like it was touching, when I go to weld this together, the machine's going to try and cut through here. So I'll just show you if I go into weld, you can see that that little line there, the outside line is still going to separate this bottom star from this one here. Whereas all the other ones are joined up. There is no line in between them. So I'm just going to undo this. The thing that you should know about the weld tool is once you've done it, and you've saved it, there's no going back. You can't undo it. You can use the Unite tool. It will have the same effect and it's always undoable. So that's something that they put in some time ago, these extra options in Combine. So I'm going to drag my cursor all the way around. I'm going to show you what I mean here. If I press Unite, you can see it's got the same thing here with the items all coming in together. 
And what I'm noticing with this one, that's a very fine connection point. If I noticed that if I'd been working on this, close down design space and then come back into it, I wouldn't be able to undo it if I had used Weld. But because I'm using Unite, I can save this, get out of it, come back and the Undo Unite is always available. So I'm just going to play around with this one a little bit and see if I can get it positioned a little bit so that it's got more of a contact point. And I think this is going to work quite well. So I'm dragging my cursor around. I'm going to go back into Unite. And that's a lot more solid than it was before. And then I can play around with this one here. I'm going to bring that one up. So I'm going to undo that Unite. I'm going to bring this bottom one up and over a little bit more. I don't want the tip of this star to peek out from this cutout. I just want to make sure I've got more of a connection point between these two stars so it's not too flimsy. So I'll select Unite again and that looks pretty good. So let's just zoom out here. Now you can see this is one full piece and then what I would do now that I've done that is bring it up to where my layout is once I've done all of this and then just pretend these red ones aren't here. I can size this down and manipulate it until I get it to the size that I want it to be for my layout. So having this background area here and everything sort of mapped out helps me visually with sizing. I don't have to measure anything. I can just look at my page and say, yes, I love this how it is. That's what I'm going to use. I used the same star overlay type piece for both sides. All I did was duplicate this one and then I just flipped it. So I can flip it horizontal and it will give me a different look to it. It's just a mirror image of it and that's how I created those two star elements on that page and also the title. I hope you enjoyed watching this Cricut tutorial video and that you'll be able to put some of these techniques to practice. As always, happy crafting and bye for now.